Okay, well, it's high, high time that we did some trigonometry. Um, so, one thing that I always sort of wrote down on any standardized test or any test that I took uh, on trigonometry in high school and in college um, was given just this one quadrant of the unit circle, if you have some generic angle theta that intercepts the unit circle at some point x, y, then you can drop a perpendicular to the x-axis. And this value right here is corresponding to your y value, and the value from the origin to here corresponds to the x value. And since this is the unit circle, the radius is 1. So what does that mean? Uh, the sine of theta is the opposite of the hypotenuse, which is the opposite over 1, so that means that the y value is equal to the sine of theta. And the cosine of theta is x over 1, which means x is equal to the cosine of theta. So for any point on the unit circle x, y, this corresponds to uh, cosine theta, sine theta. This is particularly helpful when you're trying to find the sine or the cosine of the tangent of a quadrant angle. So, for example, if you have a question that says, you know, find the value of the cosine of negative 7 pi, for example, then what you can do is you can think about a unit circle Think about a unit circle, and find out where negative 7 pi is. So here we're at theta equals to 0. There's negative 1 pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, negative 4 pi, negative 5 pi, negative 6 pi, negative 7 pi is this point right here. That's negative 7 pi. So what happened? I went negative 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, and ended up at negative 7 pi. And that's the point negative 1, 0. And so what's the cosine of negative 7 pi? Well, the cosine is going to correspond to the x value of this point, which means the cosine of negative 7 pi is equal to negative 1. Okay. So you can use the fact that any point in the unit circle x, y is equal to cosine theta, sine theta, to find any quadrant angle. Um, if we have an angle that's not a quadrant angle, then you have to use triangles. So maybe you're asked to find the sine of, oh, whatever, 3 pi fourths. So again, you're going to consider the unit circle. And where is 3 pi fourths? Well, there's pi halves, so here's pi fourths, or 45 degrees. Here's pi halves, or 90 degrees. Here's 3 pi fourths. Or 135 degrees. So here is the triangle you're going to consider. And make this triangle a little bit larger. This is your right angle. So this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which means the side lengths are 1, 1, and the square root of 2. So you're trying to find the sine of this. So the sine of 3 pi fourths, here's your reference angle. So it's opposite, which is 1, over hypotenuse, which is root 2. So the sine of 3 pi fourths is 1 over the square root of 
root 2, and then we're going to rationalize this by multiplying the top and bottom by root 2. So I multiply by root 2 over root 2. So I have the square root of 2 over, well, root 2 times root 2, that's positive 2. Now, the sign corresponds to a y value, and then you have to think about this, is your y value in this case positive or negative? So here, this point corresponds to this point. So is that point, is the y value of that point positive or negative? Well, we went in the negative x direction and in the positive y direction, so this is positive. So the sine of 3 pi fourths is the square root of 2 over 2.